paying with cash for your next vehicle? Before you start thinking that you should waltz into a dealership and flash that cash, no, 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 and no, hold that thought. It's a good thing you saved up your cash for a car purchase, but you gotta know this. Don't say, I'm paying cash the moment you walk into a car dealership. Coming up in this show is why you shouldn't reveal you're paying with cash too early in negotiations at a car dealership. And before this is over, I'm gonna help you cash buyers understand how to defeat a car dealer using their own business model against them. It's a patented homework guy secret. There's also a giveaway at the end. Let's roll. I'm Kevin Hunter, known as the homework guy. Don't worry, the amazing Elizabeth will be back for the next show. For the best free car buying advice available on the planet, make sure you see the car buyers blog on thehomeworkguy.com. Also, by the time you're done seeing this show, our new book, Buy Smart, Drive Confidently, will be available as an ebook and an audiobook, and links for it can be found on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. The Homework Guy team has always proudly represented you, the cash buyer, so let's roll. Believe it or not, you're helping to push the industry to change. After all, cash transactions are a dealership's Achilles heel. Not to mention, it's always better for our economy when there's less borrowing and more saving and fewer people going into significant debt on a rapidly depreciating tangible asset. Yes, you heard me right. A vehicle is not an investment, no matter what any finance officer says to you. Let's quickly revisit the basics before diving in. You should always avoid announcing your intention to pay cash upon entering a dealership or when initiating contact with them via email. You might wonder, but isn't cash supposed to be king? While that was true years ago, sadly enough, that era has passed us by. In today's automotive market, hefty profits are crowned the new king, and these royal profits aren't easily garnered from cash transactions, nor from you smart homework guy viewers out there, and especially not from anyone who hires us to negotiate their car deal directly. More on that coming up. Now, admittedly, there are a few random dealers who prefer clean cash transactions, but they're clearly in the minority. Most dealerships, and particularly those with finance departments, offering loans and additional products, this type of dealership typically does not favor cash transactions. The reason is straightforward. Follow me in this analogy. Let's say you need to borrow $1,000 from a friend. They let you pay it back next month in full with no interest. Well, that's $1,000 total. However, if your friend suggests a monthly payment of $61 for two years, you might say, okay, it sounds reasonable because the payments are low and then you overlook the fact that you're paying $1,468 back against the original $1,000 loan. That was an interest rate of 40%. Paying back the $1,000 in 24 payments of $61 just added $468 to your bill. This example applies perfectly in car dealerships too. Beyond the charge interest expense, financing also allows dealerships to include various add-on products, dealer profit packing fees, and inflated interest rates often unbeknownst to the buyer. My friend Tom used to always say, what's behind the kimono? Well, that's a funny illustration. Financing provides dealerships with a veil to hide behind, or maybe a kimono, allowing the dealer finance officer to introduce numerous charges, a strategy not viable with a cash buyer. It seems like a strong statement to say that most dealers hate cash buyers, but it sadly is quite true. Hence, because of the finance office and the temptation that writing loans provides a dealership, cash is no longer king, the preferred payment method. Cash is definitely not king. By the way, this is exactly the kind of garbage the FTC cars rule aims to make blatantly illegal. If you're wondering when the rules will get implemented or you heard the date was paused due to NADA court challenges, I'd remind you that these practices are already against the law, but that message, unfortunately, falls on deaf ears with some of you. You don't get it like the amazing Kathy and Jackie did. So here's what happens if you declare your cash payment up front. You signal to the dealership that they'll likely miss out on a significant amount of profits from financing, leading them to want to potentially overcharge you for the vehicle. Negotiations stall or go nowhere. Many cash buyers end up paying more contrary to the expectation of a better deal, largely because of this dealership mindset. We also have a blog post about illegal price discrimination. That's when the dealer says, you're paying with a check and not taking a loan from us? That'll be a cash buyer fee of $9.99 extra, sir. To which you say, no! stop. If you hit this wall, you said you're paying cash way too soon. Let's avoid all this wasted time and effort. Let's identify what you say first when the dealer employees are pressuring you to talk about your payment method. When they ask, how do you plan to pay? 
You answer by saying, I don't have financial discussions in the parking lot or in the open showroom, but I'll be interested in seeing what your finance office has to offer after we agree on a price I'm willing to pay. That covers everything from their perspective. First, that you're saying you're not interested in hearing that question again. Second, that you know your rights. And third, that you're keeping the door open to getting a loan from the dealer. If they ask again, you say, as I said, if we can agree on a price I'm willing to pay, I'll be interested in what your finance office has to offer. And then firmly add, don't ask me the same question again. By the way, we don't recommend doing price negotiations at the dealership anymore. Test drive and then leave. Get the name of the salesman and then email them when you get home using the templates we provide on our blog, both for new and used cars. The template asks for price, fees, taxes, and finishes again with that awesome line. I'll be interested in hearing what your finance office has to offer if I decide to purchase this vehicle from you. You wait for a response and then negotiate a proper OTD before you return to the dealership. Note, do not argue with them about fees via email. Only ask for the price of the car itself to be what you're looking for. Their OTD offer might be full of crap fees and garbage add-ons, but it's easy to address. You send back a counter offer which subtracts out everything you don't want and give them your own version of an OTD offer which should only be a fair price plus tax title and license fees. Include this question. If I make a substantial down payment, can I just write you a check? It's an important question and you shouldn't forget to ask it. Liz's best advice at this point is to call your own DMV office on your own time using the agreed sale price of the car and the info like VIN, miles, etc and ask them how much it will cost to register the car and get the title and license plates for your state. That's the amount that you should plan to pay, so get your finances ready. If you're going to pay cash, you can actually write a personal check or bring a cashier's check, put a down payment on a credit card or a debit card. You don't actually bring green cash in your briefcase. Like a family I once met on the showroom floor, they had a brown paper sack, just don't do that. Now comes the magical moment when you finally answer the question. How do you plan to pay? You'll be sitting in the finance office with an agreed upon sale price of the vehicle. And if you have a trade, that'll be decided as well at this point. If you're planning to pay with cash, you have two options here. Number one, you can say, I'm going to pass on financing and have decided to pay cash. At this point, dig out your checkbook. Or if you don't like the possible argument, you can do number two, use the car dealership model against them to outsmart the finance officer. If you're negotiating in person with cash, Make sure you bring a copy of the FTC cars rule with you to help argue away the fake fees and add-ons. We have a dozen videos about this, so I won't cover it now, but go see 11 fake fees or car fees you shouldn't pay. As I said, if you don't want to argue and still get a better deal, you can use option two to outsmart the car dealer. We covered this step in depth in our video called Cash Car Buyers Can Outsmart Car Dealers if you want more in-depth look at this process. But you're here right now, so here's the basic idea. When you hear, how do you plan to pay? This is where you say, if we can agree on a price I'm willing to pay, I'll be interested in hearing what your finance office has to offer me for a car loan. Sure, you'll wanna have decent credit to do this, and you do have to fill out a credit app, but don't worry because the ding on your credit is very temporary, and you do have a sneak attack up your sleeve that they are not going to see coming. You take the car dealer's best offer for 63, 66, or even 72 months. To be clear, it must be longer than 61 months, so legally there cannot be a prepayment penalty. Do you see where I'm going here? Stay with me. You take the car dealer's loan and agree to it, and now you argue away the fees. If you decided to not negotiate from home like we teach you with an emailed OTD request, you can start this conversation by saying, I'm going to be making a car payment, but I just can't justify doing this loan with all these baloney fees. Have some disdain in your voice when you say this. The finance officer is required to show you the total sale price of the vehicle, as well as the total amount financed. That's just the law, not any regulation you might think isn't implemented yet. It will look like this. You can point to this data and say, look right here. The sale price of the car with taxes and state fees included is 54,900, but because of the loan, I will pay nearly $8,000 in loan interest. Since your loan markup is between one and two and a half points, you'll make thousands over the course of the loan. And yet here we are arguing over a 499 dock fee and what we both know is worthless window etching that neither of us wanted. I'd say you're making a killing on this loan as it stands. Look, 
I need to get on with my day. Perhaps I should just leave or do you drop the fees, take the big profit you're already making and we call it a deal. You'll pocket a 15 to 20% commission off this the way it sits. Most finance officers won't really like that you point out with certainty that you know how much their commission is going to be, say in that 15 to 20% range of the markup they're getting on the loan. And that's just for your loan officer. After he or she deflates and finishes up the paperwork, review it again carefully. Make sure the total amount financed and the total of payments shown are still correct. No added junk. They might even tell you, make sure you make at least four payments if you intend to pay off the loan early. And you just say, yes, sir. Sign, shake their hand and leave. Walk out the door and smile now because here's the best part. On loans over 61 months, there is legal protection for all consumers in every state that there is no prepayment penalty. You heard me say it once already. So what do you do now? When you get your payment book in the mail sometime over the next few weeks, you can simply take all your hard earned money and pay off the car loan with one payment. Poof, just like that. See, you were worried when I told you to take the loan and a long loan at that, but here's the funny part of this whole scenario. When you pay off a car loan from a dealership before three months, the finance officer gets what's known as a chargeback. That is, he loses his commission. <laughs> Listen, friends, here at THG, we're not about taking money and income away from honest citizens, but feel free to comment down below if you're still wondering if these are indeed honest citizens you're dealing with in dealer finance. Dishonesty deserves a just reward, which is nothing. If you enjoyed this great turning of the tables, which is a perfectly legal type of bait and switch that finally serves you the car buyer and not the dealer's pocketbook, share our homework guide videos with family and friends. If you like what we teach but want direct help planning your car journey, consider a membership at the help desk with Liz, either at $24.99 for email support or $49.99 for tech support from both of us. We are busy, but for members, response time is always fast. We coach you on black book values, the steps of the car deal, and review your offers. If you want to talk directly to me, sign up for a $99 phone call and get all of your questions answered. Also, this is the phone call that can hook you up with our new car broker service through our new team member, Stuart. I've got to say, when you see the video update from him later this week, Stuart is on fire and the several THG viewers who immediately jumped on board with him are ecstatic about the savings they're getting, not only in terms of the thousands of dollars, but in terms of avoiding the usual dealer hassles. Aww. Stuart's process is hassle-free car buying at its best, something we promised would happen sometime back. Now, if you made it this far, I have a special offer for the first five people to respond by text to Liz at 701-441-3399. All you have to say is, I watched your new cash video. I'll give away a free 15 minute phone call directly with me to the first five viewers who respond with this message. We will have a giveaway on the end of every show we do from now on. It pays to make it to the end of a Homework Guy show. On behalf of the Homework Guy team, I'm Kevin Hunter. As always, thanks for listening.